Hey guys, in this video, I want to show you how you can self-host your own password manager. Um, it was in the news recently, LastPass was compromised once again, and this time customer data was stolen. So I thought it would be a good idea to make a video uh, on how you can self-host your own password manager. Um, we are going to install Bitwarden in this video uh, on a Docker container. My current setup is uh, I have a fresh install of Ubuntu 2204 LTS on an ESXi virtual machine. Um, you can install it on any server, either virtual machine or physical server. Um, we are going to install Docker on it and then we're installed Bitwarden containers. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so we have a fresh install of Ubuntu 2204 here. Um, I have not installed anything. I've only configured SSH and set a static IP. Uh, if you have just recently installed it, this is how you can enable SSH. Uh, first thing you want to do is um, run sudo apt install SSH and enter your password. Okay, and once it's installed, you can go into the configuration file, run sudo nano slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config. And at the bottom, you want to uncomment the line that says password authentication. Uh, we are enabling password authentication so that we can use ssh to log in from one of our local uh, computers uh, using putty and uh, use it with passwords. You want to uncomment this line. This will be commented by default. Just uncomment it. Press Control plus O, enter Control plus X to exit out, and run uh, sudo service ssh restart to restart the service, and we should be good to go. Uh, you can use uh, PuTTY from any computer within your local network um, and connect to the server, no issues. Um, once that is completed, we want to start off with running some updates. Uh, make sure our repositories uh, are all cached and up to date. So apt update slash y again. Um, I have a habit of not entering sudo every time. So in order to prevent that, I'm just going to run all commands as root uh, sudo dash i. Now I'm root, so now I can run commands without having to enter sudo. So let's run our update. This is going to cache all the repositories with the latest update. Um, next, we are going to install dependencies. And again, I'm going to put all these commands in the description so you can follow it in real time um, as I go along. So once this is complete, uh, the dependencies are looking good. We can now install the Docker official repository uh, to APT. So we need to add the GPG key first in order for the server to accept the repository or install any packages from that repository. So this is the command to add the GPG key. Once that is done, next thing we want to do is add the repository. Um, this can take a few seconds. And once this is installed, uh, I'm just going to run another apt update just to make sure um, we our, our server is aware of that new repository. And once that is done, next thing we can install Docker CE. The dash Y in the command is going to automatically accept any prompt as yes. So this may take a few seconds again. Um, once this is installed, we can verify the status of the service, make sure it is active before proceeding further. So I'm going to wait for this to finish. All right, it seems like it has completed successfully. So I'm going to verify the status of this service. Uh, as we can see, it shows active running, which means the Docker is successfully installed. Next, we're going to install Docker Compose. This is one of the requirements uh, for the Bitwarden script. Uh, the script itself, it uses Docker Compose to 
full containers from uh, from the websites. So we're gonna install Docker Compose using these following commands. So make it executable. So the first command downloads the Docker Compose binary, and then the ne the uh, the next command is uh, basically making that binary as executable. Uh, so now, if I run Docker Compose dash dash version, uh, it should I can pretty much run that because uh, it's an executable. Uh, once that is completed, uh, we are going to create a dedicated Bitwarden user uh, and add it to the Docker group. So the following command would do that. Uh, we're creating we're creating the new user and adding it to the Docker group, and we're also creating uh, slash opt slash bitwarden directory. Once that is done, we are going to do a password reset for this bitwarden new, uh, user. You can set up any password you want. I am going to set up the password, and it has been updated successfully. Now, we want to assign permissions or assign ownership to this Bitwarden user on the newly created Bitwarden directory. So chown recursive Bitwarden and then the directory uh, location. All right, so we have that done. Next thing you want to do is, uh, it is one of the requirements again, uh, in order to complete the Bitwarden install, you need installation ID and installation key. Uh, which you can retrieve from the Bitwarden website. Um, so this is how you can get the key here. I am going to pull it up here. You can enter your email address. You can go to bitwarden.com slash host and uh, enter your email, click submit. This is going to create a installation ID and installation key. Uh, just put that on a notepad or keep it in a secure place that way you can use it in uh, when you're installing a bit word and using that script the script is going to prompt you so once that is done um, you can now switch user to bitwarden and now I'm going to go to that directory slash opt slash bitwarden that was created and we are going to download the script from bitwarden's website if I do ls, see we can see bitwarden.sh, it's a bash script. We are going to make that script executable by running chmod plus x bitwarden.sh. Next is we are going to install, run this script as sudo. So sudo bitwarden.sh install and enter your bitwarden user password. And there you go. So now this script is going to prompt for a few details. Um, the first is the domain name of your Bitwarden instance. Uh, you can call it anything, vault.whatever.com, uh, whatever your domain name is. Uh, for this instance, I'm just going to call it vault.demo.com. Um, now this server, the demo server that I'm using right now, it does not have any ports forwarded. Um, so the let's encrypt certificate generation is going to fail. Um, but essentially you want port 80 and port 443 forwarded directly to the server and you can press yes and allow let's encrypt certbot to download the certificate uh, depend uh, for whatever domain name you've selected in the initial question. So in this case I'm going to say no but if you do say yes make sure you have your ports forwarded for it to successfully work. And now third question is the database name. Um, I'm just going to call it Walt. and just allow these downloads to complete. Okay, so now it is prompting for the installation ID. Now this is the ID that we had retrieved earlier, so I'm just going to copy and paste that that's my ID. This is my installation key. 
and it is prompting if I have an SSL certificate. I'm going to say no here. Uh, but if you had chosen um, Let's Encrypt certificate, then you will not get this prompt because it will automatically detect that Let's Encrypt has successfully installed. Um, in this case, it has not detected a certificate, so it's prompting me. And if I say no here, it is going to create a self-signed certificate for me. So it's asking now if I want to generate a self-signed certificate. I'm going to say yes to that. Allow it to generate and the script is complete. So once the script is complete, again, um, it's uh, you can read here, it says if you need to make additional configuration changes or if you want to modify anything, um, you can modify under this YAML file and uh, you can then rebuild your uh, Bitwarden containers using the following commands. Um, it's the script and then there's one parameter. Uh, it has rebuild, update, start, install is one of them that we earlier uh, used. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So next step is to run Bitwarden script and start. It is going to now pull all the containers, uh, the SQL and any attachments, um, API identity. These are all the containers it's creating that are going to be utilized by our Bitwarden container. Again, this may this can take a few minutes. So I'll let that finish. All right, so it seems like it has completed. It did take a few minutes to complete. Um, and as you can see, it says your vault will be accessible at vault.demo.com. Now, if you were to visit the website, if I go to vault.demo.com now, it's obviously not working. So I'm gonna try to go I am going to try using the IP address and it still redirects to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on to my PFSense and I'm going to create a DNS entry here for wallet.demo.com so that I can access it. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that. If you do own a domain, um, then you can pretty much point your uh, A record to that particular uh, URL or domain name and uh, to the, uh, sorry, your A record to your external IP address. And if you have your ports forwarded correctly, it should work. Or if you have a local DNS server, you can create a local record for that. That would work as well. Um, Bitwarden by default, the script, it doesn't allow you to access it through IP address. So you do need a subdomain uh, of some sort um, to be able to access that. So in this case, I'm, I am just going to create a local DNS record for wall.demo.com and point it to my local IP address and should be good to go. If you don't have a domain, there are free domains available. Um, you can even get a Dyn DNS uh, or dynamic DNS domain noip.com um, and host it that way if you prefer. Um, but yeah, having a domain name is a requirement. So. I am going to go into our service. I'm going to go to my DNS resolver here and I'm going to add a record here, vault, and it's going to be demo.com. And my local IP address is 1037.0.24. And I'm going to save that, apply. And just so that I can verify that it's pinging correctly wall.demo.com is working now. So if I refresh it, as you can see, I have, I've been uh, visited with a Bitwarden login credential, uh, login page. So if you notice, I have a self-signed certificate, so that is to be expected. Um, over here, you wanna create a new account. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to create an account with my email, set up your master password, um, Again, I'll just set up something here quickly. So create account. And if I log in with my master password, it should be working. There you go. Now, if you do want a uh, password reset and all that, um, we can set up SMTP for this. Um, so we can go back to our server and we want to visit the env file within your bitwarden so i'll go to cd 
opt if i do ls here uh if i go to cdbw data do ls again or ls dash la there is a env file somewhere here that we want to open and um edit that so and enter our smtp server so that it can use that for uh sending out emails so let's verify that it's in the env folder it's the environment variable so env and then nano global override.config it says permission denied so we're going to use it with sudo so we call it uh, sudo nano global override config and then over here we have our smtp host you can use your smtp server you could use google's smtp if you want smtp.gmail.com port 587 um, ssl would be true and then you can enter your username and password uh, setting up smtp is a pretty easy process um, but if you do want me to create a video on just that on how to use smtp uh, with gmail to use i can create a separate video for that um, just comment down below and let me know um, but this will be your username and password for your gmail account and when you do use smtp on gmail accounts you have to enable allow less secure apps there's a setting within your security settings under the account uh, that needs to be enabled so you can do that or if you're using office 365 you can use your uh, relay connector um, again microsoft has guides for that as well uh, so you can follow if you have questions i can answer that i can even create a video on that if uh, i get a lot of comments um, but essentially that's that's all it is uh, once you have this configured then your bitwarden will be able to send out emails um, you do need emails set up because uh, for verification purposes obviously uh, but as you can see our password vault is set up i also want to go over uh, quickly that you can get apps for this bitwarden um, install there are windows apps available i have my windows app installed here um, there are browser extensions available um, right here um, you can configure it with your server and it's pretty easy, pretty accessible. You have iOS and Android apps available here for Bitwarden. Um, and then you can install it on your web browser. You have extensions for pretty much every browser, every recent browser. Um, yeah, and that's about it. If you have any question concerns, uh, let me know. And if you do want to see videos like this, uh, give me a like and uh, subscribe to the channel if possible. Thank you.